kidding. Kyle's filming right now. This is his X3. We're down here at the place to be. Wayland Speed R&D. We're going to be doing some cool stuff with this today. So you guys saw in the last video, put a Turbo RR Turbo on this 2018 X3 of Kyle's. And we did that because the Turbo RR Turbo is a little bit bigger than the factory Turbo R Turbo. So we're going to be seeing what this thing actually makes for power today. We're going to be fine-tuning it in, seeing if there's anything else we can squeeze out of it. And then also, I'm picking up something that's been missing from my life for the past, I don't know how long. I'm getting my X3, the Rex 3. It's coming back to Richard Rules. So there's been some changes made since uh, we last dropped it off. We got some stuff figured out. You guys saw me racing that thing in Indiana at the Badlands a couple weeks ago. Having some belt problems. We came to a conclusion on what the issue with that was. And uh, I don't know if I've ever done this before in my life, but I've requested something be tuned down. Normally, all about you know tuning stuff up, getting the most power out of it as possible. But the Rex 3 is meant to do everything, which includes trail riding, you know, includes cruising, just you know, have an overall good time. So the Rex 3 is on pump gas right now. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. Kind of a new setup, pretty cool. Also, some other stuff we're gonna be doing on pump gas in the future, I'm excited about that. You guys will have to ponder and think about what that might be. Think MoTeC, think... You guys will just have to take a guess at what we're gonna be doing with this thing on pump gas. So anyways, we're gonna get the Rex 3 pulled out. We're gonna pull Kyle's machine inside. We're gonna do a boost leak test on this just to make sure when we put it on the dyno, it's got, you know, it's all sealed. We're not losing any boost anywhere. Maximum power is what we want. So, we get mine pulled out. Take a look at that. Talk about it briefly. Get Kyle's pulled in. Do the boost leak check. James is uh, dynoing another machine right now. Actually, the world record holding uh, stock Turbo X3. Very cool. Maybe we'll see that. And it's just a good day down here. It's pretty warm, but just a good day to work on X3s. I love it. What do you think? Yeah, and they got. I think they got AC in there. They do have AC in there. <laughs> It's a pro place. I really like coming down here. Haven't had a bad time here yet. Nope. Knock on you know, that tree. Knock on wood. I mean, you're close enough. <laughs> it's be a good day. So let's get this stuff moved around. Here it is, the Rex 3. Uh, I feel pretty bad. I brought this to these guys in uh, lackluster condition. I, mean, I just left a drag race and immediately brought it here after. Wow. No excuse. Feel bad about that. Sorry, guys. I've also done it before. Really sorry about that. I was, just, I was just talking about how bad I felt about uh, bringing this in this condition, but I've done it multiple times, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the deal with the Anyways, Rex 3 on pump gas. So same turbo, same pretty much everything, just dialed back a little bit. But one big change, we've got a different STM Power Sports clutch on there. So we went ahead and decided that we're just gonna have two clutches for this thing. So when I want to go racing, we'll just bolt the big dog uh, Rage 4 with the TRA conversion on. When I want to trail ride on pump gas, we've got this one. So we don't need to mess around with changing weights or anything. It's just a simple matter of getting a clutch puller out, popping one off, torquing the other one on. Classic, no big deal. So that's very cool. The engagement, I think James was saying is about 2600, which I feel is for a trail application, very good. And Oh, I'm excited to drive this on pump gas. I think the big turbo, it might be a little laggy, but think back to that comment I made about the Motep. Lag, when you don't want lag, you know, just think about that, guys. Keep that in mind. That's not a project for today, but coming up soon. Anyways, let's back this thing out. See how it is. I'm excited for it. engagement super smooth it's gonna be a good setup for the trail so I'm looking forward to getting this thing back I mean I need to do a little bit of cleanup work on this thing not just actually washing it but there's some 
with destroyed plastics and when I had it out of that drag race, blew the inner CVT cover, so I need to replace that. I need to get this thing in prime condition. You know, it's been neglected. It's time to, you know, give it a little attention. She deserves it. She's been working hard. We'll get it going. So that's that. Uh, I guess what's cool about this is, so it is on pump gas, but with the MoTeC, I mean, it's just a matter of switching between sport and eco mode. And the sport mode is going to be our, you know, full kill race tune. And then eco mode is just this trail setup for 93 octane. So on 93 octane, I think they said it made, what did they say 260, 268 or something like that. I think so. Pretty respectable for a 93 octane tune. So that should be plenty of fun to, uh, you know, do most things. And when we need to smoke someone, throw some E85 in, change the clutch, hit the sport mode button we're gone so let's get yours pulled in we'll show you guys how to do that boost leak test make sure everything's good there and then we'll wait for those guys to get off the dyno make some power oh yeah we got kyle's machine i don't know if i've seen a good video on a boost leak test so it's good information to have a lot of uh a lot of guys have questions why their machine doesn't seem like it's making the power it used to or it's not making the power it should after a new tune. There's a lot of places you can be losing boost at on these things, so it's a good tool to have. So Kyle's in here taking some stuff apart. What are you taking out? I'm taking a uh, intake duct that goes from the turbo to the air box. Taking that off so we can put the boost lead tester on the turbo, which then you'll put air into that and then it forces air through the turbo to the motor yeah i'll grab that quick so essentially what we're doing we're just gonna you know pressurize the whole intake air system kind of like the turbo would so these guys have this fixture here this end hooks up to the uh, inlet of the turbo and this is going to hook up to compressed air we're going to put about 20 pounds to the system and then just go over the connection spray them down with soapy water look for bubbles if there's bubbles that indicates a leak no bubbles, indicates it's sealing up. So pretty simple test. Uh, shouldn't take too long, hopefully. And then uh, once that checks out, either we're gonna have to fix some stuff or we're gonna be good. And then uh, I'll get this thing over on the dyno. Make some pulls, get her fine tuned in. You got a big trip this weekend. I hear you wanna smoke some people, so yes. we gotta get that ready. Can do wheelies. Wheelies, yeah, those are fun. I've done a couple of those in my day. Yeah, I don't wanna do I don't want to go as far as you have. Okay, yeah, no, I don't, I don't recommend. <laughs> All right, so here's our setup here. We've got everything hooked up down on the turbo. Here's our gauge. We're hooked up to air. Now, big thing is make sure when you hook something like this up, the valve closed. is closed because, uh, you know, I don't think the old uh, plastic intake plumb is going to take too well to 100 PSI. No, so. no, she's coming apart. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to slowly open this valve until we get to about... 20 pounds and then we're just going to hold it there spray everything down with some soapy water see what we can find for leaks if any hopefully not hopefully none definitely leaking around that clamp we can give it more air Right there. Yeah, so we do have a little bit of a leak at the turbo inlet, but yeah, I kind of thought we might. The coupler is a little large, but yeah. I just tightened the clamp. All right, well, let's start spraying stuff down and see if we see anything obvious. I guess we can show you what we mean by bubbles just spraying around here, seeing if there's any. We might need to pull those CVT ducts off. Maybe. You know, that'll give us access to the to the inner core. Get to the hot side. All right, we can get this side. Ooh, God, this leak. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see it. That's why we check this stuff. Oh yeah, check the blow off valve, that's smart. How's that look? I don't see anything. 
pizza? Looks like it. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good size one up there for, for sure. Need to address that. No, mind my uh, little bit of a ghetto. Yeah, we should talk to some guys about that. Yeah, we might have to get a catch panel on here and be smart about that. Uh, the throttle body doesn't look bad, right? I mean, I don't see. I mean. I don't, is that some right there? Right here. What about like right here? I don't know. I feel like it might be a little bit or is it just... It might just be some foam. I don't, I don't think it's weak. Yeah. It's weak in a little tiny bit there, but... Yeah, it is weak enough. Yeah, we gotta get that uh, upper charge tube, see if you can get to that on the... I sprayed it. Oh, you did? Okay. I don't know, can you see it better? Eh, not great. <laughs> not great. Eh, kind of from this angle. Oh, I guess it won't look like it's working. No, it's not, not bubbling up up there. I mean, a little one right there. Zoom out. Focus. Got a little one there. Got the front, or post throttle body. But major one over here. Like, we gotta fix this one for sure. Upper charge tube at the intercooler connection repositioned and retightened down. And then over here, we ended up pulling the throttle body off because after looking at it a little bit closer, the clamp was kind of starting to wonk off on an angle. So Kyle's over there cleaning the oil off that and we've got a little bit better clamp to put on there and hopefully hold that on there straight. And after that, we'll retest, but we should be good after that. All sealed up, ready to make some jump. All right, with the clamps repositioned and also had a little bit of a leak at the wastegate actuator, so we fixed that. Water checked everything again. And then we also pulled pressure away and verified that the pressure wasn't excessively just dropping out. Uh, everything checked out good. So we're going to tidy everything up and then get it ready to put on the dyno. Also, they got this super nice new uh, DMG Mori CNC. I'm going to go play around with that for a little bit, see what I can, uh, see what I can do with it. Does this guy even know what the f*** he's doing? <laughs> we're cool, baby! Alright, this is a familiar feeling. Not my machine, but I've been here before. What are you thinking? I'm hoping, good, I'm hoping they're not gonna be not disappointed, but you don't wanna get your folks up too much for a dyno. Oh yeah, for sure. Dinos can be heartbreakers. Yep, so. definitely. I think she'll do good. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Alright, this is it. You're doing the first pull. today but bad air it's pretty hot it's pretty humid so that's good just had to run it back okay 242 picked up three can't, can't beat that all right so it made what 239 then 242 yeah. and wow. we looked at the data logs and Everything looked good for the most part, but we saw the wastegate duty cycle was like 100%, so the the target boost wasn't matching actual boost, right? That's what it was? Right, yeah. So we added a little bit more crack pressure, see if we'll get those boost numbers up and yeah. gonna hit her again? Yep. All right.
heat soaked. Might be. Might be warm. Might be running up to the limit of the stock uh, intercooler in this weather. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe that a little heat soaked. Fine so fast. Yeah. It's like it was like I think I saw 130 this time. That's a lot. Uh, Touch too much. Yeah. Maybe just put the fan up there to try and kind of simulate the car moving through the yeah. air a little bit better. And uh, we'll see if we can get some more of that. But. All right. Yeah, we'll try that. Yeah, that's next level that's there. <laughs> so even though this has an intercooler fan on it, I mean, the machine isn't moving. There's no airflow running across it. So this will simulate some degree of... You know, there being actual vehicle speed. Hopefully it picks up a little bit of power. going to do it for another fun trip down here to Wayland Speed R&D. We got Kyle's machine running good, 242 horsepower. Very impressive from such a simple combination on that thing. So he's going to test it out this weekend at Silver Lake. I think he's going to beat up on some people for sure. Hopefully he's going to be able to do the wheelies he wants to do. Got the Rex 3 back. Plenty of stuff I need to do on that. Beautify it a little bit. We've got some cool tuning stuff we're going to be doing on that and just driving it just putting it through some abuse that's what that thing's built for so we're going to take it out and rip that thing pretty hard so appreciate you guys' support in this matter a bunch of new stuff coming up as usual we'll see you in a few days <laughs>